every single time. Because America is still a free country, and we still have a right to face our accusers. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm going to continue to expose the lies. I have zero connection to Russia. I'm an American patriot. Everyone knows it. And this whole Russiagate thing is about delegitimizing the election that the American people had in 2016. And it's a fraud, and as the president says, it is a witch hunt. But it's beyond a witch hunt. They have used the lies in these committee hearing meetings in the House and Senate to deplatform me and unperson me off of the internet so that I can't respond to the future lies and the straw men that they've built. This is a danger to this country. In what free nation do they have hearings at the national level and talk about someone like Alex Jones, who truly for hours, and then never have a chance to then be heard by the committee? What country have we turned into where the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN openly lobby to take me off every platform and openly lobby that anyone that talks about Alex Jones in a positive way will then also be blacklisted off the Internet? Google and Apple are officially moving to China. They are adopting Chinese communist-style tactics. They are helping censor and round up the political dissidents, the Buddhists and the Christians and others who are then taken and worked to death and their organs harvested. Just in 2006, 2010, they had committee hearings in this very Senate committee on intelligence and told Google, you are now evil. You are aiding and abetting evil. Look at the congressional record. Ten years later, there's zero discussion of Apple and Google and others moving to China. Apple has moved the iCloud to China and has given the government the code keys to everyone's Apple device. A total national security violation of the highest levels ever seen. It's well known that Hillary transferred the Office of Personnel Management files of 21 million U.S. government individuals and their families to the communist Chinese. And that's why Trump's enemy number one. Because there's a globalist sellout of our country to communist China and espionage carried out by the Democratic Party and many members of the Republican Party as well. That's why I've been targeted. So I can't have a press conference. As you can see in America, cannot face my accusers. That's how it works in this country. There you go. That'll be your news cast. So got to got to listen a little bit. I just popped in there. Um, I asked them. I said, "Are you detaining Alex? Are you arresting Alex?" They said, "No. This is merely just a conversation that they want to have with him. He's here behind this closed door. They did not allow us to have access while they're discussing whatever it is they're discussing with him." But I do want to point out that of all the have you ever seen this happen before? I've never seen this happen before. Typically, uh, this this specifically is set up for people to <laughs> hold press conferences. Usually, what will happen is uh, either witnesses like Jack Dorsey or Sarah Sandberg or senators, um, you know, sometimes senior staffers will come out here and address the press, and that's, that's. I mean, you, you can even see it right there. This is, this is, there is a microphone here. You guys just got your news? Um, do you have any response to the fact that Twitter said that you specifically violated their terms yeah, you guys of service? The well, you know, when Peter Fonda said that he wanted to kidnap the president's son and put him in a cage with pedophiles to rape him, uh, that violated their terms of service as well. They're all very subjective. They can say and do whatever they want. The media ran a hoax and said that I said things on Twitter I didn't say. And so, again, uh, they can say all day I violated their terms. Jack Dorsey didn't take me off Twitter. And you, the so-called media, has been foaming at the mouth to get me further deplatformed so I can't respond to the lies. Think about this in America. Think about this in America, that I have been unable. This is the 11th hearing that they've had in this last year and a half where I'm one of the main focuses, and I have not ever been called to testify when they say outrageous 
slanderous, defamatory things when they've had in the House Intelligence Committee, Senate Hi. Intelligence Committee, and others, they'll have people point blank uh, from the CIA, you name it, who are leftists, say Alex Jones works for the Russians. That is an outrageous lie beyond Joseph McCarthy, anything he ever did. But when McCarthy did it, he, the people got to come in and got to confront the committee and say, you have no decency, how dare you act like this. This is a hundred times worse than anything Joseph McCarthy ever did, and it's a shame. M Mr. Jones, today's, this morning's hearing is specifically about um, preventing election manipulation. This afternoon's hearing is... Sure, 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 yeah, yeah, but every time they have these meetings, it, they bring up info wars. They claim they're taking info wars down to stop election meddling. Obama established with an executive order. He established with an executive order before he left office a, a special office that deals with foreign propaganda. What it's really been used is to target domestic populist popular groups. It, the real election meddling is by Facebook and Google and others that are shadow banning people, that are outright banning people, and that are blocking conservatives involved in their own First Amendment political speech. There is a giant crackdown that even the New York Times calls it a crackdown on conservatives and a plan to deplatform conservatives from the, from the Internet and communicating with each other, just like communist China. This is dangerous authoritarianism, and they've packaged silencing Americans who are popular and well-spoken, as Tucker Carlson said about me on Fox News, not because what I say is bad, but because what I say is effective and true and popular. So they build straw men and misrepresent what I've said and do, and then they use that straw man to try to kick me off of the air. This is so dangerous to now have the New York Times foaming at the mouth calling for me to be taken off the Internet completely and anyone who supports me being taken off. My God, this is true authoritarianism. Come to America, and you've got a bunch of dying corporate mainstream media that doesn't know what to do. And because they don't have any viewers or listeners, people that support them anymore, they think silencing independent media and silencing newswars.com and silencing infowars.com is to somehow let them get control of the narrative and stop the giant political realignment that's happened in this country towards populism and free market and a 4.6% growth rate. That's what they want. That's what's going on here. What you I don't want to Jack Posobiec from One American News. This guy, patriot. Naval intelligence, whole nine yards. Tell, Mr. Jones, tell me what's really happening here. Alex, what we've seen and what we're starting to see in a lot of this is a lot of censorship, primarily of conservative voices and independent voices. You know, one thing that a lot of people have said about you is uh, they talk about violence and inciting violence. But you know, from what I've been able to see from InfoWars, you've got a very strong anti-war perspective. And what, how would you comment on that? Well, that's right. We had New York Times reporters lie about WMDs in Iraq uh, consciously, Judith Miller, and that got over a million Iraqis killed and tens of thousands of our troops. And then I have the New York Times asking me if I'm inciting violence. This is, this is what they do. Adjourn the hearing. The nomination process was compromised. Well, well this isn't the, the, this this is is the Supreme matter. Court. You're talking about the media, that's, right? That's you're talking about the press. <laughs> Brett Cabana does not believe in freedom of the press. He does not uphold the First Amendment right to protest and freedom of speech. Can I ask you this question? What do you think about the left openly pushing to have conservatives deplatformed and taken off the Internet? I don't think that's the issue that we need to care about the most. What we need to protect right now is rule of law, democracy, the political process. Okay, so so conservatives, conservatives don't have any free speech. No. Yes. The economy matters. Jack Dorsey actually intervened to keep you on Twitter. You're saying that he's not going to be able to do that. Jack Dorsey intervened to some of his colleagues. I want to keep him on the platform. How do you respond to Let's be clear. Jack Dorsey and executives at Twitter denied that to USA Today. So, I mean, I think that's more fake news. Uh, but Jack Dorsey's uh, made well, it no. He interfered to help you in any way. Well, he he's denied that. So I just I mean I'm, I mean you asked the question. I don't know. All I know is this: simultaneously, four major tech giants in 24 hours admitted they colluded, violating Sherman Antitrust Act two, bare minimum to deplatform me for more than 20 million subscribers total. People that chose to go click and link and listen to what I was saying and what I was doing. They told 20 million subscribers, you can't go listen to Alex Jones anymore. How an American is that? And then Jack Dorsey, who admits he's a liberal, and they let the leftists on their call for killing everybody, all sorts of violence, he said, look, okay, you could technically say Jones might have violated a rule here or there, but compared to the left and all the incredible violence they're calling for, there is no comparison. So the media has had to cherry pick things that I say on air. Like Chuck Todd this weekend said, the Democrats and Republicans are coming together in a call to arms against President uh, Trump. And, the, and some conservatives said, oh, they're calling for violence. No, they're not. It's a figure of speech, okay? So when I say we're in an information war and we're going to go over the top and we're in the trenches, those are all metaphors. Everybody knows what they mean, but the media won't show the video clips. 
they take words I said, like word salad, and put them together. And then I open up the newspaper, and it sounds like I'm saying the most outrageous stuff ever, which I won't even repeat here as a false quote because the media will run with it. Well, can you tell us why we're here today? What is the way forward? What is, it, is it more regulation? Is it more laws? Is it other companies? What do you see as a way to break free of this situation? That's a really great question. From my research in top law firms here in D.C. and in New York and L.A., we have looking at this, and we have been getting information of the president, uh, briefs on this. And, and I, I told people a month ago he was going to take action. He started doing that. They're looking at Sherman Antitrust Act 2, uh, illegal collusion, uh, violation of campaign finance law, uh, in-kind donations by, the, by these big tech giants, blocking all conservatives, blocking members of Congress, shadow banning. That's billions of dollars basically in gifts to the Democrats by, by, by blocking their competition uh, from the free marketplace of ideas. So the president needs to move forward with a push for a blue ribbon commission on defense of the First Amendment. He needs to move now with executive orders uh, exposing that this is a new form of campaign finance uh, violation and in-kind gifts to the Democrats by big tech. Uh, he needs to continue uh, to expose what these companies are doing. He needs to send in uh, federal regulators uh, from the Federal Trade Commission because these companies are colluding together in fraud to suppress the marketplace. He, he needs to expand his move against Facebook for violation of the Unfair uh, Housing Act where they track your sexual preference, your medical issues, how old you are, where you come from to decide what to charge you. Everybody deserves to be you know, charged you know, the same price with open market stuff not being tracked with secret data. So what these big tech giants have done is gotten away with murder, violating our rights, working with communist China, suppressing populations, and just doing incredibly evil things. But because they all pose as liberal trendies and wear, you know, funny socks, it's all supposedly <laughs> cute. It's not. President Trump is and needs to move aggressively with only 61 days left till this critical historical election with worldwide implications of nationalism versus globalism and needs to stop the election meddling by big tech and the Democratic Party who are openly trying to steal this election at a million times what a few Russian bots could ever try to do. The truth is Facebook and Google are giant Democrat Party bots. We have the WikiLeaks from Schmidt, the head of Alphabet and Google, saying we are 100% Democrat, we are going to block everybody, and we're going to deliver Hillary into the White House just like we did Obama. But then when they failed, they got mad, and they said, this time we will deliver you the victory. So this is big tech, allied with communist China and authoritarians, lined up against the American people, and an American president trying to kill our recovery, trying to kill our populist movement, and that's why you've got desperate leftists and major newspapers openly calling for all of their competition to be shut down. This is outrageously villainous. Who would have imagined 10 years ago that you'd ever see mainstream media doing something like this, saying shut down, not just Alex Jones, as Senator Murphy said a month ago in a tweet, he's only the tip of the iceberg. He said, shut them all down. And then Senator Wyden said, Alex Jones isn't the worst, because he's God, you know. And he said a bunch of stuff I didn't say. He goes, Alex Jones isn't the worst. There's thousands of others that need to be shut down, deplatformed, disappeared, and the so-called press that went to journalism school is foaming at the mouth like mad Cujo dogs with rabies to tear the First Amendment apart? Remember this. You killed your profession by becoming nothing but mercenaries for the globalist, and people know that you're fake news, many of you. Now, with you trying to kill the First Amendment, you're making yourself true villains. CNN is not just fake news. It's the criminal news network that works as a racketeering crime syndicate to openly shut down my media operations and other people's media operations. They have sent the New York Times and Washington Post for six months to stalk me where I live and to offer people money to lie about me, and they can't even find people to do it. This is a criminal mafia that thinks they own this country. And Judgment Day politically is here, and the attempts to intimidate the American people, and the attempts to silence us, and the attempts to bully me and others into submission to this globalist system are not going to work. The answer, because I'm a libertarian, and, and I don't believe in a lot of regulation, but, but, but by the government leaving a vacuum, the communist Chinese, the EU with its big billion-dollar fines, the Democratic Party, Senator Warner, who's been quarterbacking this, came five weeks ago to big tech. This is in the news. And they said, if you don't ban all these conservatives and give us the election for the Democrats, we're going to bust you up and we're, gonna, we're going to make you federal with real antitrust because you're already a trust. And so they said, okay, we'll ban then all the conservatives. Who do we start with? Start with Jones. He's a good straw man. We've demonized him. You know, we built this... Yeah, and so that's what they did. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Think about how they do this over and over and over again. Senator, Senator Warner told Big Tech, shut down the conservatives. Senator Warner told them, shut down the conservatives five weeks ago, and that's why they're doing this, to steal the election. 
Very Jack Dorsey fact, suspended you for several uh, days. Did that at all change your behavior on Twitter or other social media? How did it impact the way that you conduct yourself on social media? You're saying change my behavior. I'm asking if it did. Those tweets that the media took out of context did not violate Twitter's terms of service. I, I am super tame compared to the leftists that are on Twitter and the horrible things that they're saying. So, do so you, do you believe that Jack Dorsey did the seven day ban because he was under massive pressure from stockholders and the media to completely ban me. And he did that as a stopgap measure to get the dogs off. What do you say Alex, to the people out there who? What should conservative activists, just patriots and pro-free speech people do? Get politically involved, speak out, stand up for the First Amendment, not just of conservatives, but of everybody, and build your own media operations and support independent media that tells the truth. That's what needs to be done. Sir, can you tell us why you're here today, you're why you came? Do you want to be yeah. part of the hearing? Are you here to the press conference? <coughs> the microphone, sir, please. You guys want to come around this way? Go around. Hang on this way. Uh, what about all the dead Iraqi children uh, that the left and, and, and the Senate and, 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 and people, well, who, what about Judith Miller getting a million dead Iraqi children? Did you say sorry as a leftist for supporting the New York Times? Because I've already responded to that. This is about the platforming and the American people. Yeah, I'm probably playing Sir, 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 because there is a concerted effort by the Democratic Party and multinational corporations and big tech to silence conservative and nationalist and populist voices ahead of this critical midterm election. And the big tech companies and, and the head of Apple admit that they met with Senator Warner, who's running this whole thing, to begin shutting down conservatives or the Democrats threatened to federalize big tech if they did not basically roll over to them. So the Republicans left a vacuum there by not coming in with regulations to say you cannot uh, violate people's free speech. So I want regulations like the First Amendment to be enforced to say you're not going to violate people's free speech, you're not going to be able to shut people down like this. And I'm also here to be able to face my accusers. This is the 11th hearing they've had where they make up all these incredible lies about me and others to sell the end of the First Amendment. And so that's why I'm here to expose this, I'm here to speak out about this, and I'm here to discuss the reality that there is an attempted purge of the First Amendment taking place in this country, and, and Apple and Google have already moved to China and are helping round up political dissidents. They've had Senate hearings a decade ago saying that Google is now aiding evil in China and helping round people up, and now Google's officially moving to China to run their whole grid of true authoritarianism. It's the New York Times that lied to me. I understand. They're all, well, well, they all made that decision together. Facebook, Google, Apple as a consortium made the decision to deplatform me, to lie about me, and to set the precedent to start deplatforming everybody else. And it's, it's happening to everybody now who's a libertarian or conservative. The dominoes are falling. The First Amendment's being destroyed. But I think the corporate dying dinosaur media has bit off more than it can chew. And what you've done is only going to make people be that much stronger and fight for free speech that much more. But I'll say this. Shame on the mainstream corporate media. Shame on the mainstream corporate media for not defending the First Amendment, but instead attack-dogging, calling for federal regulators to shut down independent free press working with big tech. These, these big monopolies need to be broken up, and these are digital commons, they've said in their own words, and under federal law, and they shouldn't be in there controlling what individuals are saying in those private discussions and in those discussions online if it's not criminal what's being said and what's being done. They let Antifa and all the Democrats organize crime and murder and criminal activity on Facebook and Twitter. But if somebody like me makes fun of somebody, or, or if I say don't sexualize kids, then they sit there and take that down. And also what the corporate media does, because he brings up Sandy Hook, is they take things I know. You, you did. If you want me to answer your question, I will. You're just going to keep marking stuff. Go ahead. Are you sorry? Judith Miller lied about WMDs and over a million Iraqis got killed, but everybody says she's a great lady. I sit there because people online questioned Sandy Hook five years ago. I listened to the ideas, and for years I've said I believe it happened, and I've apologized if things I said taken out of context hurt people's feelings. But the corporate media will then never, ever run all the dozens and dozens and dozens of times that I sat there and I said I believe mass shootings happened. And this year, the media lied, and I'll offer people a million dollars that can find this. The corporate media lied and CNN called for me to be taken off uh, 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 YouTube and everywhere else saying that I said no one died at Parkland and they were crisis actors. That is not what I said. I said the police stood down. And then people pointed out that out of 3,000 students, 
the four they use in the media bragged on NBC News that they were in the drama club, and I said they were well-spoken, anti-gun young people. That's why they were chosen. Saying people were in the drama club, so they're well-spoken, is not saying they're crisis actors and nobody died. And the corporate media then rebooted that because that's what they do, like babies in incubators, which didn't die. And they had they had hearings in here in 1991, 1990, claiming that Saddam's people in, in Kuwait took little babies out and bashed their brains out, and that's how they started the invasion that later killed millions. And so millions of people. So so so, 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 hold on, hold on. If this Senate has had hearings in this building and in other buildings, lying and saying, lying and saying that, that Saddam Hussein bashed babies' brains out to launch a war, people then have a right to question corporate media. And later, if you find out it happens, then you say, okay, you believe it happened. That is what I stand on. That's the so fact. So, what regulation, though, are you you're calling for government to regulate media? <clears throat> Let me explain what I'm saying. You can have a law like the law currently is, saying these are digital commons, so Google and Facebook and all these groups don't have liabilities with what a third party says or does on their little message board or their page or their video post, as long as it's not illegal. So they get these liability protections by saying that they're not the publishers. You understand? And so now they're coming in saying, no, we'll choose what could be on and clearly discriminating against conservatives. So I'm saying we need an executive order, we need hearings, enforcing the law that you can't go in there and then act as, quote, publishers, but also have the liability protection that these monopolies have. And I want Sherman Antitrust Act II enforced, and I want the Fair Housing Trade Act enforced. Who do you think had the top lawyers write the reports to get them to the president? Think the Easter Bunny did that? Because while you guys sit there and put up one image of Alex Jones, there's a completely real Alex Jones behind the scenes. And that's why Soros and the globalists are scared. I, what I do behind the scenes is far more effective than what I do on the air. I've learned half the time you can't even get through to the public. But you know what? I can sure get through to policymakers and people with reports from top law firms. So you wait in the next few weeks with what you're about to see with executive orders. I told you this stuff was coming with Facebook. You watch what happens. It'll be more important what happens in this meeting. This is going to be a political meeting in here where, where, where the Democrat senators are going to say horrible things about me and horrible things about Trump, and then the executives will agree with them like it's true. So, so it should that's be illegal all the, to ban you from Twitter. That's what you want? It should be illegal No, that's to not what I'm saying. They have to follow the law. You understand the law? They can't sit there and arbitrarily enforce when they say under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and other sections that they're operating under that they can't use these... these, these their own discrimination against people and ban them as a group, especially when the Democrats, you can't have it both ways, are everywhere saying deplatform conservatives, deplatform Christians, deplatform Trump supporters. They're everywhere saying remove us because of who we are political. So just like we have laws protecting people because of their race or their sexual issues, we need to then be able to say for your political ideals as well, and you know it's all coming. Because the persecution of libertarians and conservatives and Christians is massive, and there will be political action against it, and you guys attempted bullying and reign of terror against the American people's coming to an end. Just wait, two weeks. Get ready for the executive orders, everything else. Enjoy yourselves. Because they can't stand the fact that they don't want me to face my accusers. But every time they have these committee hearings, I'm going to be here. And I'm going to leave marches in Washington because I'm going to tell the truth. And the mainstream media, doesn't matter how you edit this or what you do, everybody's going to end up getting the truth. It's not going to be stopped. We're going to have people going in legally and lawfully into sports stadiums. We're going to have people doing all sorts of stuff. You're not going to stop the message. You have just awakened the sleeping giant. The corporate dinosaur press and the kingpin Carlos Slim and Jeff Bezos and all these other mafia thugs and the Chai Kong running it are about to find out the sleeping giant's awake. So I'm here to face my accuser. I'm here to let them know they're not going to sit there in their committee and lie about me and say, well, Jones is a racist. Why do you let him on air and never show any proof? Or Alex Jones is a Russian agent and never show any proof. I get to face my accusers. When they had the McCarthy hearings, wasn't it in this building? When, when they had the McCarthy hearings with people that were admittedly in the Communist Party, he, they got to face their accusers. When people were uh, called Russian agents, they got to be in here. Even when people that were from Russia and people that had backgrounds connected to the Russians, they got to face their accusers. My family's been here since before 1776, freaking founded Texas. And these traitorous globalists sit in here and tell me that I'm a Russian agent? They are the criminals. So, listen, Bill Clinton, Hillary, Uranium One, all of it, it's coming out. Mueller delivering uranium on the tarmac. Uh, all, Jerry Epstein covering up the Lita Express with video cameras on the airplanes to, to frame people. Mueller. He's a monster. These people are monster criminals. Please, Alex, just, wait, just, like, just like I said, oh. just like I said, the Catholic Church is coming down for the pedophile stuff. You watch. 
Half this government is run off pedophilia, and everybody knows it. And the media can't cover it up anymore, so good luck. Just to be clear. America's waking up. You're calling for the federal government. You're calling for the federal government. The moderating of all the... No, you're not listening. Um, the Alex law. Still here. The law says he's they're the third party systems, okay? There is a law remarks, saying that they have to either be a publisher or a newspaper and be liable for what's on the platform, or they have to be a third party commons and a telecommunications and system, like two people on a phone line. The phone company's not responsible for what you say over the phone line. So it's called the law. And I'm saying the press is there to murder the truth and confuse listeners and viewers, but I'm saying enforce the law. Jack, so you're smart on the cell phone information and how important that would be for any sector, not just manipulation of the election, but also when it comes to manipulation of the stock market or which has been set up as a way to kind of provide uh, sort of immunity for content as on them as opposed to actual platforms. Actually, Cassandra, do you want to mention that about Section 230? Now, come on over here. Come yeah, on, Section 230, right. which they've been abusing to shut down all conservatives, and you've also got the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, Safe Harbor. Those are laws. You know, the way Google and the way Facebook... So you want to apply those to... I want to apply, you understand, you can have a law like the First Amendment that says we have a right to peaceably assemble, we have a right to speak, we have a right to religion, government can't make any regulations thereof. See, it's a, it's a positive law pointing out freedoms we already have that are inalienable. You understand? So that, that's the Bill of Rights, that's the Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the freedom of the press, the right to assemble, petition the government for redress of grievances. That's the First Amendment that you guys in journalism are supposed to know about. So it's saying you can't sit there and take somebody's free speech away extrajudicially. Okay? That's what they're doing. Are you are you asking the, the these um, social media platforms to be treated more like to be regulated more like a public utility? Or they you say they're a public utility. Okay. That's what they're right to be here with the block out shot. Thank you. Oh oops. Oh guys, they are public utilities. That's in federal law. The, the, the tech giants have argued their utilities. They've argued that your speech isn't their concern as long as it's not criminal. If you can't call the cops on somebody for what they're saying, you can't take it down. Someone can sue you for that through the legal system. That's called checks and balances. If not, you end up in Nazi Germany or Communist China, which Google and Apple have moved to and are helping suppress their people. They had Senate Intelligence Committee hearings in 2006 and 10 where they said Google is now aiding and abetting evil in China. Google is now authoritarian. You need to stop. I know Google's not here today, but Facebook's moving in. Uh, 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 all of these companies are moving into China, and they're all colluding together. And that's the point. So how are you going to confront them on a daily basis? I, I, I caught bits and pieces, but I wanted you to explain. Every time they have one of these hearings, I sat back and watched the last 10, where they lie about me and they lie about the First Amendment and they misrepresent what I've said. I'm going to come to D.C. and I'm going to have press conferences and I'm going to start having marches and I'm going to start doing a lot more because I'm going to face my accuser whether they want me out there or not. I am going to confront the lying corporate spineless media that is now an assassin of truth that now works with big corporations to try to silence independent real media, talk radio, you name it. The corporate media is dying because people know they lie. They know they edit. They know they twist. And so the corporate media is in a perfect storm with the collapsing Democratic Party and the collapsing Republican blue blood neocon establishment to circle the wagons and use governmental power claiming that the election was stolen by Russians and that everybody that wants freedom or low taxes is a Russian agent. They have said in committee hearings, in the House Intelligence Committee, Armed Services Committee and others that, quote, Alex Jones is run by the Russians. That is like saying I'm run by Martians. It is an absolute, total, ridiculous fraud. It's, it's unbelievable. And now they've used that to try to go after my credit card processors, to try to take my websites down. I mean, they are viciously trying to shut me down. It's being run out of an office inside the CIA with that whole act that Obama signed in the Defense Authorization Act of 2017, the Countering Foreign Disinformation Propaganda Act. They've got billions of dollars that they're paying to corporate media to put these lies up. Yes, he was. He signed the executive order. Barack Obama was president in 2017. You better believe it. Trump came in on the 20th of January. God, you liberals are dumb. <laughs> I mean, it's <that's laughs> unbelievable, brother. <laughs> You're dumber than a damn box of rocks, son. Uh, but what kind of Listen, I'm going to tell you one I'm tell you how it works, okay? Okay? On, 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 on December 9th, he signed uh, the, the, the defense authorization, and then uh, 
About two weeks later, early January, he signed another executive order. Go read it. I just gave you the name of it. The Countering Foreign Propaganda Disinformation Act. Okay. No. No. Obama left office in January of, two, of 2017. No, 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 no. I'm saying 16. But he also did it in 17. Two acts. Look, Obama signed the orders. Go read the orders. You can deny it all day long, okay? That's how they play these games. Okay? Pardon me? Silicon Valley bragged and said they were going to swing the election for Hillary in internal emails. But America woke up. Yes, they're doubling down thinking they can crush Americans like they've crushed the poor Chinese and like they've crushed other people. And big tech is working with authoritarians. You are losing your birthright. We are all in serious danger, ladies and gentlemen. What does Twitter say to you? What do Google, what do, the, what do the executives say to you when you take them on? I mean, do you send letters to them? Do you have your attorney to deal with them? What, what response are you getting on a legal basis as, as to why this is happening? Look, Google has made the decision along with Apple to deplatform everyone and bring in authoritarianism. They've already made the deal and merged with China. Do you understand, folks? China is running the show. They own all six major Hollywood production houses. They own the national debt. They bought off all of our politicians. They were given the Panama Canal. They have 98% of rare earth minerals. You think the Chinese government got 98% of rare earth minerals by accident? Federal regulators preclude U.S. firms from extracting them. We have been handicapped by design by the communist Chinese that murder their political dissidents, that murder Falun Gong, that murder Christians, and murder gays. And people can laugh about it, and the Chinese chi -com agents are everywhere in this country. They're running major universities, and we're getting ready to bust it all up. So keep laughing. You're Alice, going to find out, traitors. Alice, when's the last time you spoke with the president? I'm not going to get into that. But what I really do is I have top law firms write him briefings because all the other lawyers are scared to do it because everybody's scared of big tech. But a lot of people are, are wondering about the, the dynamic of your relationship. First with the president, he's been on your show. What was I, the have, last time I, you have, I have top law firms, top law firms, top, sending briefs. I'm not going to get the... Huh, just wait. wait. Wait a few more weeks. Okay. Well, wait, just wait, like wait. I told you it was coming on Facebook. Just wait a couple more weeks. Do you have a direct line to the president? I have many ways to get him the information. And then he, he says to his lawyers, "Why? oh my God, look at this. And he has other lawyers look at it. They go, this is absolutely dead on. This is, and then, you know, it's got the you law firm. So what do you want the president to do? He always talks about I provide, the I provide, I provide patriots across the country with research. Other people aren't willing to spend money or spend time. I engage top law firms, three law firms, to write reports to the president. Has the president made any decisions based off policy information you've given him? No, I told you I've had top First Amendment and antitrust and, 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 and anti-organized crime law firms that recognize that Mueller and the Clintons are an organized crime network and that big tech is an organized crime network allied with the foreign power China and that they're using the Russia canard as the smokescreen for this takeover. The Pentagon, it isn't like I tell Trump anything. He, the Pentagon's no, telling him this. The, the patriots in the CIA that aren't leftists are telling him what he gets from the law firms I've sent is he already what he's getting from the Pentagon. And he says, is this true? And they go, yes, this is absolutely what's going on. What action do you want him to take today? Today, Pardon? what do you want him to take? What do you want him to do today? I want the president to move with Sherman Antitrust Act 2 to enforce the First Amendment and end not just monopoly practices in business by the big tech giants, but their criminal collusion to violate the civil rights of the American people and to violate the unfair... A housing act, which he's already doing with Facebook, but to move aggressively with federal regulators and the Federal Trade Commission and to move aggressively with the special office that he needs to direct be set up in the FBI to move as a clear and present danger against the election meddling of the communist Chinese, the Democratic Party, Hollywood, and the globalists attempting to overthrow this move to restore the republic back to the people. Specifically, what do you want it's to a national to security you? issue. The, 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 the Russians are babies compared to the communist Chinese allied with the big banks in Hollywood. And the, the, the Chinese communist lust for blood uh, over their own people is only surpassed by Hollywood's deep hatred for America, deep hatred of our success. Like Bill Maher said, he hopes we have a depression to teach Trump folks. Again, these people hate America, folks. You've got to understand how much the controlled corporate left hates this country because they've been sucking off of us forever. And so their culture is hating America. Their culture is knowing that America's ethos is superior and it is a, it is a system of hating America by losers and authoritarian trash. And the, the authoritarian trash is about to find out that not everybody's scared of them. And I'm taking them on, and I'm willing to be demonized and lied about by the corporate media. Because we're going to take this country back. And don't worry, the left wants to arrest everybody without trials. You're going to get to face your accusers. 
those of you that have worked for the globalists, those of you that have been paid by foreign powers, you're going to be in front of a jury of your peers for the crimes you've committed. We've got the New York Times taking foreign money. We've got CNN taking it from Gulf dictator states. We've got you. This country has, they've used our open society to bring us down and to bring in all these foreign actors and all these criminal groups to totally sell the nation out. Mainstream media doesn't say a word about China killing 100 million of its own people. They don't say a word about killing Christians or Falun Gong or anybody else, which shows they love to do that here. And the universities are anti-free speech. Uh, the Congress doesn't let you face your accusers. They sit there and lie about you because they're authoritarians and they've made the leap into darkness of authoritarianism. And that's where we are, and that's why I'm here to say, listen, you can edit this and do whatever you want. People on the Internet are going to see this. You can't deplatform me. The New York Times ran a fake story yesterday saying, my traffic has been cut in half. I pulled up Google Analytics that morning, live at a desk in my office, and showed us with almost triple our previous record for the two weeks after, double our previous record, and now we are still above our all-time high uh, level for a baseline. We have record traffic. Our apps on iPhone and on Android went to number one in news right after we got banned from being like number 10, so they delisted them from being number one so people wouldn't see we were number one, but they're still there. And then the mainstream media lobbied for my apps to be taken out of the app store, saying it's not enough, we want his apps removed, and now they're lobbying in iTunes because you can still get to the directory on my website. It's on my servers. All iTunes does is put a wall up, and then they direct you. They're lobbying to have millions of people's own computers delete Alex Jones on them. These people think they own your computers and my show that's free to air. This is pure authoritarianism. Are we going to just sit here and put up with this? So it is will, outrageous. Where will voices like yours are you advocating to quit Twitter and start their own platforms? Jack Dorsey knows which way is the wind's blowing. He, they've been some of the biggest censors out there in Twitter. And I think when the president pointed out what they were doing was illegal, uh, he, he's kind of left me up there and a few others to like say, oh, look, we're not censoring. And that's kind of the smokescreen uh, for censoring that's going on. I don't think he's the worst. They've had polls uh, that uh, the big tech companies did just last week where over 70% of Apple employees want me completely banned from the Internet, period. Uh, and then only 22% in the same uh, internal survey uh, at uh, Twitter said they want to be banned. So I guess maybe Dorsey has some First Amendment aim because at least his employees in a survey said they believe that. What do you want President Trump to say to you or do to you? China. I mean, he's his buddy with Xi. What do you want him to do? Uh, well, oh, 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 he's buddies with the dictator? Well, he always says he's buddies with my yep. good friend Xi. With yeah, yeah, well, and while he puts hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs on him, and, and while he sends the fleets there to confront them and their belligerents trying to take over the South China Sea, and while they fire our ships, no, Trump is walking softly carrying a big stick, and he's hoping China understands that we put them in power in 49, that the Rockefellers put them in power, Mao Zedong, and that they're lucky they even exist, because they didn't have any running water you know, there at, at the end of World War II. So if, if we would have gone there and saved it from the Japanese, they'd basically all be exterminated. So that's what's going on here, is that communist China has been enslaving its own people. And you got the Politburo appointing him as dictator for life. I understand Trump's being nice to him publicly for face-saving so that it gives China an out to stop screwing us with a $500 billion trade deficit, $300 billion a year on top of that. Uh, so, so, so we're talking about $800 plus billion uh, in intellectual property being stolen on top of that. This is outrageous, and Trump's saying enough. Canada with a 280% tariff on us on dairy. We have no tariff on them. I mean, come on, folks. We have been used and abused by everybody. I love China. I love Canada. I love people that live in Europe. But they can't sit there and take us for granted anymore. And Trump's just being a good American president and standing up for the people. So we've been so trained to hate our own country that we see somebody who's pro-America and we think he's the bad guy. Finally, no, Hollywood's the enemy. Finally, were you, did you request to go to either of these hearings today? Yes, I uh, actually had three or four hearings in 2017 lying about me. I started calling. I started saying to the committees, next time you have them, uh, you know, please have me. I sent letters. No response back from anybody uh, except Matt Gates. I got a message to him uh, through Roger Stone before they had those last hearings six weeks ago in the Judiciary Committee. And I said, listen, you can be a champion of free speech. We're not calling for new regulation. We're calling for the regulation that there's a First Amendment to be enforced. And instead, he went there and said, you're a private company. Do whatever you want. The next day, they all shadow banned him because he told them, go ahead and shadow ban me. Then he went, whoa, I feel violated. I can't even talk to my constituents on Twitter. They went, oh, we're sorry, sir. You said we could. 
I mean, this is insane. What should we do about credit card companies? What? You requested for this hearing in the House. Uh, yes, I have. I, re I have requested the last seven hearings or so. I mean, the first three, I watched with my mouth hanging open. Hours of them lying about me, just saying outrageous stuff. Where the Democrat congressmen and women all I say some terrible thing. You know, like you heard Alex Jones, you'll kill Jesus, right? They're like, yes, we know, but he can still be honest. I'm like, well, we want him taken down. I mean, it was. It's, uh, I sat there and I watched members of Congress and hearing after hearing say, we want info wars off the air. And then you've got Senator Murphy, you've got Senator Warner, you've got. Uh, all these people, Senator Wyden saying, take Alex Jones completely off the internet and thousands of others. That is so un-American, that is so dangerous, that is so out of control. Wake up America, stop living like this, stop being idiots, realize you're having your birthright stolen from you right now. This is serious business. What should be done about credit card companies and looking conservatives? Oh, my God, that's totally illegal. That's a total civil rights violation of credit card companies blocking conservatives having Visa or MasterCard or being able to sell their books. And the main group, strangely enough, they've been targeting uh, are Jewish groups that are conservative have now been having uh, their credit cards taken away, just like Hitler did to the Jews in the 1930s. First thing Hitler did was take banking and, 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 and commerce from the Jews. Then he put them in ghettos, then he took them off and killed them. And literally, you've got all these conservative Jewish groups having their banking taken away because they support the state of Israel. My God, this country has slipped far. I mean, wow. It's, I mean, conservative Jews can't even have credit cards now in America. David Horowitz, uh, uh, Mr. Spence, I mean, the list goes on and on. They're literally being depersoned. I, I mean, my God. The left is literally recreating Nazi Germany here in America. Well, the press Thank is you. silent. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah. We've had them try to take our credit card processors away. They took one away. Because, yeah. oh, well, you can have your own website. No, they're trying to take our website down right now. They're trying to take Infowars.com down. All right, Jack, you got time to do that interview now, brother? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Absolutely. Anybody got a hand? Yes, sir. Sure. Is there a bathroom in here? You guys can't walk the hallway. Alex just went to it that way. In fact, I think the press run, they ran out of questions. Uh, they, they actually stopped. So uh, that, was, that was very interesting to watch. I'm going to talk to Jack and Cassandra over here. Oh, no, I already got it. I'm going to say, what would y'all think? He outlasted them. <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't withstand the energy. You know, he had, he had, he just, just, just so many logic bombs, and he was, he was short circuiting their mental processes. Uh, so they would go to ask questions, and he's already answering their next questions before they've even finished the first question. And, and you could see people getting tripped up and all this. Well, that was 2016 or 2017. Obama wasn't. He's like, no, Obama did this, 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 and this, and here are the dates. You're, but that date was too, no, shut. Like, all right, what are we doing? I'm oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Here, this guy just gave me that. Yeah, kind of, not black, it's just over here, I guess. We don't have black hole. Well, that looks good down that way. This guy's always thinking about the angles, huh? I know what I'm doing. All right, so Alex, what, what is the goal today? What is the goal that you want to get across at the bottom line? My main goal is to warn the American people that our cherished First Amendment is literally being stolen, is being robbed from us right now. And they've had now 11 hearings where they demonize myself, the free press, the Drudge Report, you name it, and, and conservative talk radio, calling for us to be deplatformed. And now we have Senators Warner and Wyden and Murphy saying, don't just get rid of Alex Jones, which happened a month ago, criminal deplatforming, but they say, get rid of thousands of other sites. And so they brought in the Southern Property Law Center and Media Matters with big tech, admittedly, in people's accounts, watching them like the East German Stasi deleting people. So I'm here to raise the alarm and point out that they've had all these hearings and I've never been called. 
And so I've been calling and writing and, and telling my listeners to call them. And I've called members of Congress. I, I've gotten my contacts. I've had lobbyists try to call them and say, listen, you need to have me in the committee hearing here because I, in, in some of these hearings, they literally have people from the CIA and others up in, in, in uh you have defense committees in the House, and these are main committees going, well, Jones is a Russian operative. I mean, it's completely criminal. But it's members of the government doing it inside uh, of a committee hearing, so they're, I guess, legislatively protected, my lawyers tell me, to then lie about me. So it's just, it's so incredibly dangerous. And I want to warn Congress, because I know that many people don't know this, because there's so many offices. In the Defense Authorization Act of 2017 that Obama signed in December of 2016, it creates hundreds of millions of dollars a year to go into this group. By the way, to, to go back on that thing real quick, when that guy was talking about 16 and 17, federal government FY17 starts at the end of 16. It starts in October of 16. Exactly. Before. But I guess he just didn't seem to understand. He, he, he didn't understand that, like, the outgoing president, you know, you know the next budget, or if he was right. in the middle of his term, it's, it's, it's right, got Because the budgets are done by the federal government before. this fiscal year. Yeah, exactly. Right? There was just different... It's, just basically doesn't understand that. What do you say, though? One argument we always hear uh, in all of this is that we're conservatives, we're libertarians, we're Republicans. We're not supposed to regulate business. Isn't this a regulation we're putting on corporations? How do you, you respond to that? Argument? That's a great point. And the way I've explained it to members of Congress and the way the, the law firms have explained it to some of the top folks administration, and that they now get it as conservatives were leaving it wide open. I'd like to have the FCC and others said it, shouldn't I agree with, you, with Mr. Pye? But then that let the Democrats come in and threaten regulations against big tech six weeks ago, which they did on record, led by Senator uh, Warren. And so the big tech began by fiat regulations because there was a vacuum left there. So just like the First Amendment, it's not a, really a regulation. It's pointing out that you can't take these rights. It's basically like property rights. And so we're saying it reinforce the First Amendment. We need First Amendment enforcement that these big tech giants have operated as monopolies, they've operated as public commons, and they've argued that it's not their job to control your third-party content. Unless it's illegal, then they call the police. But they're going back on that now and discriminating against conservatives, nationalists, and patriots. So this is a major civil rights violation. Uh, it's a major violation of people's privacy. Uh, it's putting people into political groups and naming them which group they're in and tracking them and treating them differently. It's very, very un-American. So we simply need the enforcement of the First Amendment brought back in under the power of the executive in an emergency action because Congress is asleep on the switch. What we've seen, um, what it sounds like you're saying more so, is that the First Amendment, the point of the First Amendment is to protect freedom of speech. And that freedom of speech is something that needs to be protected across all industries, across all fields, government, private, we should always protect freedom yes. of speech. Is that essentially your bottom line? Yes, and, and the left and the corporations have admitted that we're cracking down conservatives. Alex Jones is just the start. We're going to ban everybody. Let's get them all off the air. They're everywhere saying they want to silence us. They say they're filing frivolous lawsuits on me to silence me, and they don't care they're going to end up losing the suits under the law. They're just using it as a way to try to intimidate everybody and shut everything down. So there is a war against free speech in this country, and I'm here raising the alarm. Do you think that Trump Will, and he's, he's mentioned this, he's mentioned using Sherman antitrust. Do you think that he'll be able to win a fight on antitrust grounds on this, similar to how Reagan uh, went against them? Yes, absolutely. I mean, these big tech giants have far more power than Ma Bell ever had. And so it's time. Microsoft got partially broken up. Well, my God, you've got the big tech so arrogant they colluded to deplatform me $3 trillion worth of companies in one day, and then 26 other companies followed suit. I mean, we even had major software groups look at our files and call us and say, and send mail, saying, you can't even use our software anymore. And so we had lawyers threaten them and say, we have a damn contract. And they're like, well, that contract's up in seven months. I mean, they're in our business, you know, in San Francisco, as an elite, all working in concert to literally put me into an electronic uh, ghetto. Kind of, um... Switching, switching topics for a quick second, but because you're close to it, um, it looks, everyone's basically saying Roger Stone, that uh, Robert Mueller, this week or possibly next week, they're, they're having hearings on Stone. Do you think an indictment is coming on Stone, and will that be tied into all of this? Stone believes he's going to be indicted because they've questioned hundreds of people, and almost all of them are questioned about me intensely. And, 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 we just, and it's wild when they me say, too. you too, yeah, they're questioning everybody. And they're asking, you know, is this person a Russian agent? How much do the Russians pay him? I never paid a damn dime. But the New York Times will go, how much did those Russians pay you? And I'm like, zero. 
well, you went on RT. And I'm like, yeah, four years ago. I mean, but they're looking at you like they really think you're a Russian agent. These people are crazy. This is Trump derangement syndrome. And exactly, Roger's been told. One reason I was deplatformed was that Roger is on InfoWars every day, and they want him silenced, and they want InfoWars dialed back ahead of this big purge and whatever it is they're planning on trying to steal the midterms in 61 days. Uh, one last question. We did a report on something, and you can comment on that if you want. But we did a report basically about the, the QAnon movement. Do you remember this, this yes. Q stuff? Uh, what's your take on the, the current state of, of where that is? Nothing against people that are into QAnon. But the information you break every day is some of the best out there, or, or that I break, or that Paul Watson breaks, or that people like Mike Cernovich break. I mean, those are real sources, hardcore, earth-shaking things. And QAnon uh, is just basically, I believe, really kind of a disinformation operation that, oh, Mueller's a good guy, and oh, Sessions is a good guy, and stick with the plan, everything's fine. No, we're in a fight for this country's life. We, Everything is not okay. We've uncovered evidence that there was a couple of guys on the 4chan website that basically created it as a prank. Would that, would that sort of surprise you that it wasn't actually someone in government to begin with? Yes, I believe it began as a prank from all the evidence we have. There's some really smart folks on 4chan that you like to have fun with already available intel. So some of the first stuff was accurate. Then it got more and more outrageous and a bunch of people started saying they were Q and now it is just a totally ridiculous fraud to get people to ignore all the huge admissions. I mean, it's admitted that Obama, when he left a month before, set up in the Defense Authorization Act, in that $611 million, a stay-behind CIA group peopled by leftists, just like in the Justice Department, they had 37 angry Democrats. This is a group of hundreds of operatives interfacing with the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN. They admit they even mentioned the senators and, and, and the New York Times and CNN, who they then couple with. And so Oliver Darcy and all these people that you see on CNN literally now are like assets of the leftist branch of the CIA waging war against InfoWars. Of the state. The, 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 exactly. CNN is now the state. They are the criminal news network along with the New York Times. And this is beyond lying. I have had the, the New York Times, Washington Post, BuzzFeed, and others as literal saboteurs in my life going around with money, telling people, go ahead and lie. Calling people and threatening them, like finding stuff about other people, or, or making it up and then threatening them, you better say something about Jones or you're going to get it. I mean, these people are, they've taken the gloves off, man. You know what? Doesn't scare me. That's fine. I'm taking the gloves off, too. That, that's good for me. I don't know if anyone else had. I'm good. We're good. Jack, I'm betting on America, and I think the power structure trying to repeal the First Amendment is going to backfire on them. They've bitten off more than they can chew, and I think Trump is betting on America, and I see the country turning around. So uh, good luck to these authoritarians, the sleeping giants awake, and I'm glad you guys are there. Thank you. You want to take a little break? Yeah. Yeah. Take a little break. You want to get a, uh, go get a, new, get a new shirt if you want to. <laughs> so, yeah, it fits them. Yeah, 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 it's it's good. Good. the maniac thing. Hey, that was good. Yeah, you were still out here. Do you have anything else? Are you want to kill them? Uh, they're going live. Send it to InfoWars.com. I guess David Knight's on right now. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if InfoWars is even covering this. <laughs> it's like we should see if they actually talked about you in the in the hearing at all. Yeah. Uh, can we go in there? Then? Yeah. We're, come on. So let's just stay here. He's really half block the hallway. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the left yesterday. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. And that's the tactic, like. It's, 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 yeah. So what the left is doing in in the Kavanaugh hearings right now, they're they're sort of it's like a popcorn tactic, but it's it's like it's like um, time release popcorn in a way. So what do they do is they've got these these leftist agents planted throughout, and that they're they're told they're told this. They said wait a few minutes, wait ten minutes between everyone who goes off, because when they go to pop off in the Kavanaugh hearings, they've got these agents planted. And so they'll say, oh, you wait 10 minutes, you wait five minutes. Then, you know, then once some, once Kavanaugh's about to speak or once someone's about to speak and we don't want to hear something, then you go and start disrupting. So, the, you know, the security doesn't actually know 
how many people are in there because you know you come most of them most of them are coming dressed up fairly fairly normally it could look like a staff or it could look like a reporter but what they do is it's a psychological operation because they're waiting sometimes five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes in between you want to go in? Do your companies make any distinction between uh, 
a U.S. citizen versus a non-U.S. citizen. And I'm, I guess now I'm more focusing in on the kind of behavior we saw where elections are attempted to be manipulated and that sort of thing. Is there, Mr. Senator, let me start with you. Is there, does your company make a distinction as to the way the activity of certain actors? So for political initial acts, we are now going through a verification process, and in order to run those in the United States, people have to verify that they are legally able to do that. So that's one area where we can distinguish. And what does that mean, legally able to do that? If a citizen of another country, any other country, decides they want to say something about a U.S. election, are they disqualified from doing that on your company? In the free content, so what their posts are to their friends and family or publicly, people are allowed to talk about any issues in any country as long as they're not crossing over into the areas we discussed that aren't allowed, like hate and bullying. In advertising in U.S. elections, you have to be a U.S. citizen. Mr. Dorsey? We have very similar policies, and we do segment them by advertising and also the more organic social creation of content as well. We don't always have an understanding of where an account is located. We have to infer this oftentimes. And this is where we do get a lot of help from our law enforcement partners, is not only to understand where some of these threats are coming from, but also the intent. And the faster that we get that information, the faster that we can act. One of the concerns that I have, and I appreciate that explanation, but what we've seen on this committee and actually seen in other contexts is that in today's world, it's so easy to either employ or even impersonate a U.S. citizen to do something in a given context. Do you have difficulties in that regard? Well, finding inauthentic behavior is a challenge, and I think you're seeing us put real resources to bear. This is why we're investing so heavily in people and technology. This is why we're investing in programs like verification. I think the other step we're taking here is around transparency. So being able to see if people bought political ads, where they're located, being able to see who's running a page, these are steps we think are really important for helping us find what, to your point, can be very difficult things to find. Mr. Dorsey, briefly. We've decided to focus a lot more on the behavioral patterns that we're seeing across the network. While we can't always recognize in real time where someone might be coming from or if they are representing someone who does not exist, we can see common patterns of behavior utilizing the network to spread their information. So we have been building a lot of our machine learning and deep learning technology to recognize these patterns and shut them down before they spread too quickly and then also link them to other accounts that demonstrate similar patterns. And we've gotten a lot more leverage out of that in terms of scalability than working on systems to identify whether it's a fake profile or not. Thank you, Chairman. Can you stand over there? And what is not often remembered, John McCain wrote some of the really important rules of the road for the Internet when he was chairman of the Conference Committee. It was always bipartisan. I very much appreciate both of you mentioning our wonderful friend, John McCain. And Ms. Sandberg, Dorsey, welcome. And I've enjoyed visiting with you. And let me go right to the question that is foremost on my mind, and that is consumer privacy as a national security issue. Technology companies like yours hold vast amounts of very private information about millions of Americans. The prospect of that data being shared with shady businesses, hackers, and foreign governments is a massive privacy and national security concern. The Russians keep looking for more sophisticated ways of attacking our democracy. Personal data reveals not just your personal and political leanings, but what you buy, even who you date. My view is personal data is now the weapon of choice for political influence campaigns, and we must not make it easier for our citizens to use it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
for our adversaries to seize these weapons and use them against us. So I'd like to see if we could do a yes or no on this. And I wrote it because I think we can. My view is from this point on, beefing up protections and controls on personal privacy must be a national security priority. Like the yes or no, Ms. Sandberg? Yes. Mr. Dorsey? Yes. Okay. Let me turn now to a question uh, based on a lot of analysis my office has done and you all have talked to us about. It. We have reviewed Facebook privacy audits required by the 2011 consent agreement after your company was found to use unfair and deceptive practices. One section of the audit deals with how Facebook shared the personal information of Americans' with smartphone manufacturers. These included the Chinese companies Huawei and ZTE. I found portions of this audit very troubling, and the findings could affect many Americans. I believe the Sandberg, the American people, deserve to see this information. Will you commit this morning to making public the portion of your audits that relate to Facebook's partnership with smartphone manufacturers? Senator, I really appreciate the question and the chance to clarify this issue because it's really important. <coughs> With regards to the audits, our third-party auditor, PwC, does audits on a rolling basis every two years, but they're continual. They're given to us. We have shared them with the FTC voluntarily, and we will continue to do that. I can't commit right in this moment to making that public because a lot of that has sensitive information, which could help people game the system, but we will certainly work with you to see what disclosures would be prudent. But let's, let's, let's do this, because that's a constructive answer, and I've got other things I've got to cover. Um, I'm just going to assume you will work with us. We understand the question of redaction on sensitive national uh, security matters. Can you get back to me within a week with respect to how Facebook will handle what I think is troubling information? Um, we're going to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, we can definitely prioritize this request. So we'll do it as fast okay. as we can, depending on the volume of requests everyone has. Thank you. And look, so you all know where I'm going with this. To me, protecting data privacy has to be a higher tier issue in terms of national security. It's going to be the foundation of the legislation that I've talked to both of you about. So that's why I feel strongly, and I think your answer is constructive, and hope we can get that quickly. What I also want to get to with um, you, Ms. Sandberg, is the issue of micro-targeting to discourage voting. This is one of the most powerful tools in the propaganda arsenal, going after individual Americans with ads and really lasering in on the ability to affect political campaigns. It's certainly been used in the past with the Russians to discourage minority Americans from voting. Would Facebook's current policies prohibit using micro-targeting to discourage voting? Senator, we feel very strongly about this. There is a long history in this country of trying to suppress civil rights and voting rights, and that activity has no place on Facebook. Discriminatory advertising has no place on Facebook. So what are you doing to um, prohibit this micro-targeting? I mean, what about ads that share false information about the date of the election, or the location of a polling place, or ads that tell people they can vote with a text message from their phone? You have said that it's unacceptable to target minorities and others, but I really need to drill down more deeply in knowing, because I think this is a primary we get bipartisan agreement on. What do you do to deal with micro-targeting? 
So with everything, when we're looking for abuse of our systems and things that are against our policies, we have a combination of people reviewing apps, and we have a combination of automated systems and machine learning that help us find things and take them down quickly. I'll hold the record open for that. Could I have, say, within a week a written answer that would get into some of those specifics? We're going to get you answers to your questions Good. as quickly and thoroughly. Uh, last as question as deals with <laughs> foreign governments aiding hoaxes and misinformation. And I'd like to get both of you, in fact, why don't you start with this, um, Mr. Dorsey. Do either of you or your company have any indication that Iran, Russia, or their agents have supported, coordinated with, or attempted to amplify the reach of hoaxes? Dorsey. Of hoaxes? Yes. Um, we, we certainly have evidence to show that they have utilize our systems and gain our systems to amplify information. I'm not sure in terms of the definition of hoax in this case, but um, it, is, it is likely. Um, just two weeks ago, we took down 650 pages and accounts from Iran. Some were tied to state-owned media, and some of them were pretending uh, to be um, free press that they weren't free press. And so, Depends how you define a hoax, but I think we're certainly seeing them use misinformation campaigns. My, my time is up. The only other area I'm going to want to explore with you is we've got to deal with this back and forth between the private sector and the government. Very often, we ask you all about the things you're doing, and you say we need the government to also help us get to ABC, and then the government says the same thing about you. We'll want to explore that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the end of your time. I want to thank you both for being here, first of all. There's an empty chair next to you from Google. They're not here today. Um, and maybe it's because they're arrogant, or maybe it's because there's a report that, as of last night, this was posted at 3.36 yesterday, this group went on basically pretending to be Kremlin-linked trolls. They did everything. They used uh, the details of the Internet Research Agency, which is a Kremlin-linked troll farm, and were able to buy ads online and place them on sites like CNN, CBS This Morning, HuffPost, Daily Beast. So I'm sure they don't want to be here to answer these questions. But I thank you both for being here. I was happy to read in your opening statements, uh, Sandberg, that talk about our democracy, our democratic process. You acknowledge responsibility for protecting our process. And you talked about our adversaries, uh, clearly linking the company to the values and the importance of this country. And I think an acknowledgment that your company would not exist were it not for in the United States because of the freedoms that we have. Uh, Twitter didn't go as far, but you did describe yourself as a global town square. But you did say that you want to support free and open democratic debate. You did refer to our democracy. And you did say that Twitter was built on the core tenet of freedom of expression, which is a very important core tenet. Here's why this is relevant, because we're here today because we learned, and we learned the hard way, that social media that was largely seen as a tool for incredible good, uh, also what makes it good can be manipulated by bad actors to do harm. And that's what's happened. We've all learned that the hard way. And so what we're asking you to do, and I think what you've agreed to do, is to use the, the, the powers that you have within your platforms to crack down on certain users who are hostile actors, who are using disinformation or misinformation or hate speech for the purposes of sowing discord or interfering in our internal affairs. And that's a positive. Here's a problem, though, that we have to start thinking about. What happens when an authoritarian regime asks you to do that? Because their definition of disinformation or misinformation could actually be the truth. Their discord, or what they define as discord, would be things like defending human rights. Interfering in their internal affairs, they would define as advocating for democracy. And the reason why I think that answering that question is so important is because it's going to define what your companies are. Are your companies really built on these core values? Or are they global companies like all these other companies that come around here who see their number one obligation to make money and therefore market access irrespective of what the price they have to pay to do so? So, for example, in 2016, the New York Times reported that Facebook was working on a program to restrict stories from showing up in news feeds based on the user's geography. The story implies, and I know it hasn't been implemented, but it implies that that was being used in order to potentially try to get back into China, but any authoritarian government could try to use that tool. Um, Vietnam, by the way, where we do operate, has a new law beginning on 2019, January 1st, that will require you to store user data inside the country and hand over that data to the government of users suspected of anti-state activity. 
including spreading news that may impede, annoy, or hurt the economy. For example, democracy activists. Twitter has a policy of accommodating countries that have different ideas about the contours of freedom of expression by selectively blocking tweets and accounts. For example, one of the countries you comply with is, is, is Pakistan that's asked you to block sites for blasphemy. Uh, the blasphemy, 647 cases of blasphemy over a 10-year period from 86 to 2007, 50% of those 50% of, uh, uh, of those cases were on non-Muslim uh, Pakistanis. Three, in a country, 3% non-Muslim. One high-profile case is Asia Bibi, uh, who has been sentenced to death after a personal dispute over drinking water with a group of women. They accused her of insulting the Prophet. She's arrested in prison, sentenced to death. Not relevant to Twitter, but relevant to the blasphemy laws that Pakistan has asked you to comply with. Turkey has requested that you block over 12,000 accounts. Since 2014, you've blocked over 700. Many of them are journalists. One of them is an NBA player, and it's Cantor. Uh, Russia blocked almost 80 accounts as of last check. We complied with that. One of them was a pro-Ukrainian account in 2014. And so here's why all this is relevant. In, I guess the first question for, for Facebook is how would it, these principles of our democracy, do you support them only in the United States, or are these principles that you feel obligated to support around the world? We support these principles around the world. You mentioned Vietnam. We do not have servers in Vietnam. And with very minor exceptions of imminent threats that were happening, we've never turned over information to the Vietnamese government, including political information. And you never will? You're not even... We would not. You would not agree to do so in order to operate? We would only operate in a country when we can do so in keeping with our values. And that would apply to China as well? That would apply to China as well. Thank you. And on Twitter, how does blocking the account of journalists or NBA or an NBA player in keeping with a core tenet of freedom of expression? Well, we, um, we enacted a policy some time ago to allow for per country content to again, meaning that within those the boundaries of that nation, the content would not be able to be seen, but the rest of the world can see it. And that's important because the world can still have a conversation around what's happening in a market like Turkey. And also, um, we have evidence to show that a lot of citizens within Turkey uh, access that content through proxies and whatnot as, as well. So we, we do believe, um, and we have fought the government, the Turkish government, consistently around their requests. We would like to fight for every single person being able to speak freely and to see everything, uh, but we have to realize that it's going to take some bridges to get there. Well, because a, a Twitter spokesman, in response to BuzzFeed article, I think about two years ago, here's the quote uh, defending this policy. It said, many countries, including the United States, have laws that may apply to tweets and or Twitter account content. And then you went on to say what you said, and our continuing efforts to make services available to users everywhere, et cetera. You, you would agree that there's no moral equivalency between what we're asking you to do here and what Tur Turkey has asked you to do or other countries have asked you to do in that same realm. We, we, we do have to comply with the laws that um, govern us within each one of these nations, um, but our ideals are similar, and our desires... Whose ideas are similar? I'm sorry. The, the companies. Are similar to who? To similar to, the, to how we're founded and where we're founded in this country. I guess my point is, how, you're not arguing, though, that what, we've, what we're asking you to do here on this information against foreign efforts to interfere in our elections is the same as what Turkey or other authoritarian regimes have asked you to do abroad against upon political opponents of theirs. They're not morally equivalent, these two things. Correct. Okay, thank you. Here, recognize Senator Heinrich, questions and then uh, members should know that we will take a short recess, no more than five minutes, and then we can be. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you both for being here. Um, I think we've learned quite a bit over the last, course of the last couple of years. I think it would be an understatement to say that we were all uh, last in 2016. Um, social media platforms, the intelligence community, this committee, government as a whole. Um, obviously, we want to learn from that. And what I'd like to start with is. She said they're going to come out. Where's Dewey at? Right here. Right here.
Are you sure you get the rest out of him? Oh, yes, sir. think about what you heard in there. At least I heard something about China, but like they're suppressing my rights. Look, like you're talking about China would do. And, and or, or, or Pakistan. They're the ones, Senator Warner, all them literally saying ban hundreds of conservatives, ban thousands of us. Senator Lucio, can you submit Devilman? Alex Jones, can you be able to testify? Seriously, do I have a first amendment? Because they're you know about authoritarian regimes. Okay. They're lying about me and they're trying to deplatform me. Twenty-six companies working in concert, violating the Sherman Antitrust Act. And now Senator Warner and Senator Wyden have said, quote, there's thousands of sites worse than Alex Jones. So we're becoming like Cuba, we're becoming like Vietnam, we're becoming like China. So regardless of what people think about me or the straw men, should I have a First Amendment or should these companies be able to, to violate the whole Safe Arbor Act and all that and then ban conservatives en masse? I don't know anything about your site. Man. No, but about the First Amendment. Yeah, I support the First Amendment. I just ask questions. You, about do, I know. I, I, you were the only one that brought up China. Are you Guys, aware? I, are you aware of the deplatforming going on? Um, in China? No, here, big tech companies are are purging conservatives. They're shadow banning people in mass. Yeah, well, my my broader concern is that uh, what we are trying to do in terms of preventing foreign interference in our elections, uh, that technology could be used by authoritarian governments. To argue, we want you to do the same thing against people that are in our country operating. For example, for them, misinformation would be something like the truth. For them, missing, for them, uh, sowing instability would be supporting democracy and freedom. But the speech. Democrats Please are doing what you said China does. That you got from Sheryl Sandberg and Jack Dorsey on that question. I think Facebook now is. I think it's important for them not to comply with any efforts to sort of go after freedom. But what about person. the Democrats purging conservatives? The the um, so you're not answering. Just the Republicans are acting like it isn't happening. Thank God Trump is. Well, but it's weird. Man. Oh yeah, it's really weird. There's no purge of conservatives. I don't know. There's no shadow know. banning well, of, 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 of members of Congress. Bias in social media? Yeah, who's this guy? We deplatformed him. Concerned about bias in social media. Well, so I he, think the bigger bias is against freedom of expression. Everybody should be. There's a. There's a. Look, I, it's I happening I here. Going it's after happening him. here, but you say I don't exist. Is that a heckler or a press a gaggle? Look at this guy. <laughs> He's saying that I don't exist, and they're deplatforming me. I just don't know who you are, man. And they, I don't yeah, sure, website. sure. And they demonize so, me in these well, very hearings, the and then he plays dumb. Here's the question. Infowars.com, you, you know what it is. Does, does Google, does Facebook, does That's Twitter, why you didn't get elected. Do they need to be regulated like, 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 like Do they need to be regulated? <laughs> Marco Rubio, the snake. Little frat boy here. All right, man. Yeah. Who are you, man? Yeah, sure. I swear to God. Yeah, you better hope you can deplatforming. Tens of millions of views. InfoWars. Everyone in Rush Limbaugh, he knows who InfoWars well, is. But Playing you, this joke over here. That's why, and the deplatforming didn't work. But, but, but here, here, here's, here's a question. Here's a question. Okay, don't touch me again, man. I'm asking you not to touch me. Well, sure, I'm just bad at you nicely. I know, but I don't want to be, I don't know. Well, you want me to get arrested? I don't know who you are. It's not just going to take my first amendment. It's not just enough to take my first amendment. Oh, oh, he'll beat me up. I didn't say that. He didn't know who I am, but he's so mad. You're not going to silence me. Not a sound well, but, there, but there are people. You are like you are literally like a little gangster thug. There are there are people in this country. Rubio just threatened to physically uh, take care of me. There are people who feel that. that they're being. Um, well, you they are being First Amendment. Silenced. They feel like he tells you China's the problem, by, which it is. But they're taking our like free Google, speech right now. Social, social media platforms, Facebook. There goes Rubio. Twitter. Do you believe that these these platforms need to be regulated like a public utility, and how do you go about doing that? Well, I prefer not to. I prefer competition take care of that. But obviously, we're going to watch closely to make sure that these tools that are being used. I mean, one thing is to say we're going to go after foreign interference designed to so and so. But it's already going on here. Another thing is to the say Democrats we're going to go after the Republicans. Because at some point, someone the has to make a determination. What's the difference between, you know, misinformation from abroad and differences of opinion within the United yeah, States? Yeah, and that's, that's happening here. a very here. fine line, and that's something we need to be careful about. We don't overreach in that direction. But then he doesn't know so about InfoWars being banned. He doesn't know about the to top news story in the country. About how they, uh, not just how they how they apply that within the United States, Info but they don't become uh, agents than of authoritarian regimes abroad to crack down on free speech. Because I wonder why Rubio got so mad at me. There's, a, uh, me there's a balance between um, huh? what is free speech and what people disagree on. Okay. Poor Rubio. Yeah, I'm sorry. We gotta get yeah, man, I got to go to the committee. Exactly. Thank you, you guys can talk to this clown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little frat boy. So cool. Go back to your bathhouse. Basically, <laughs> 
compromise at the bathhouses. There goes Rubio, a little punk. Anyways, you got to love people that come from authoritarian regimes, and, and then they don't even. Well, but what, but actually, America. okay. So, freedom of speech. What do you make of the fact that you just you just got into it with Senator Marco Rubio, former GOP presidential contender? Actually, does well. No, and you're here and you're speaking. I mean, this is America. So, how is your speech being silenced? They're trying to block me from live streams. We have one more left on Twitter. They took down all the others. that had millions of viewers. 20 million subscribers. They just took all that. Now they're lobbying in these very hearings to take me off final platforms. And, and then they bring up, quote, fake news in these things and claim anybody they disagree with is fake news. Just like he's saying China does, they're doing it. I say, Why are you giving this guy airtime? Oh, see? See? Oh, the left. Why are you giving this guy airtime? It's like we do everyone. Because it's what it's all about. The left doesn't want free speech. They're about deplatforming. Don't do this. Don't give this guy airtime. Anyways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Plus, they didn't invite us. It's usually like that. That was good. It's out here. Did your Rubio threaten to take me out? He said, I can take care of myself. No, I'll take care of it myself. You just literally threatened to fight you. Jack, Jack, what's up? Tell folks what you just witnessed here. Come on over here, Jack. So, I mean, my guy says. You know, Rubio may not have been able to recognize Alex because maybe he hadn't seen you with the beard. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt of this one. He may not have known you with the beard. Oh, I he knew. That's what it was. No. But then, anyway. then you said, yo, well, you go from Infowars.com. And they all said Infowars.com. And, and, you, and he started saying, I think he actually had a good line about how authoritarian governments overseas will ban people that did And I'm saying the left's doing it here. Right, so then you basically brought up and said, well, what about when it happens here? And then it's, oh, I don't know who you are, and you're an idiot, and everything. And you put your hand on your shoulder, and, say, and you're saying, you know, Marco, I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain this to you. And then, get your hand off me. Don't touch me. And it was, I mean, I, I didn't think. And the other guy's like, Argh. And then I'm like, hey, and he's like, well, I can take care of myself. I can take care of my, I don't need security. I'm going to take care of what's myself. The, what's the main point you're trying to make today? I wonder why Rubio hates me so much. We didn't know who you are. I, I, he doesn't know who you are. He's, he's, he just he's hates me so much when we ran that, we ran that bathhouse story. Hi, I'm Penny Starr with Breitbart. Can you just tell me what your main your message is today? Well, as you know, Breitbart's, uh, as, as you know, Breitbart is being deplatformed. Thousands of other sites are being blocked, being shadow banned. Uh, 93% was the latest number they were blocking Breitbart. Uh, they are openly saying, take us all off the air and block us. And, and then they play dumb and act like it's not happening. Yeah, so, and, you, so you're trying to call them out on doing it? Well, they've had 11 of these hearings, and I haven't heard myself being brought up yet. If this is the case, it's the first one they haven't, because they sit there and they bring up these incredible lies about me, and then the CEOs sit there and respond back. They'll go, Alex Jones is calling for violence. They go, yes, we know, but he didn't violate our rules. So I didn't call for violence. Oh, right now, let's see what's going on. Thank you. Never ends, man. Jack, I'm, I'm here to face my accusers, one way or the other. Jack. What they say? Uh, I assume they commented saying they're talking about you in the hearing right now. Yep. Yeah, Marco Rubio said, I'll take you out. <laughs> right here. Damn. How you doing? Right here. Right here. There's no prohibition against that. I'm never going to dip it down for you, though. You guys have dehumanized me. You have to don't exist. You've asked me to be platform. Stop violating my First Amendment in those hearings. Yeah, you guys are a bigger threat than China, the Democratic Party. I'm trying to take my rights and my speech. Shame on you. Shame on you, you un American tyrant. Where's Pasov again? Is that there? He's on the phone. 
So did we miss Dorsey right when we ran down here? No, no, no. I said Pacific. What he said down there. Unbelievable how they play dumb. Do what? Because they demonize me in all these hearings and tell lies about me, and then I never get to face my accusers. So I'm going to start showing up at these things, trying to take my free speech and my children's free speech and lie about me, build a straw man to destroy my free speech, and then never even let me challenge my accusers. Absolute cowards. Unbelievable. So that's what we're doing. That's what Infowars.com and Newswars.com are doing. What do you think about what they've discussed so far? Well, I walked out and I saw people comment if they were talking about me, probably talking about fake news. What were they saying? I don't know. They just said they're talking about you. They probably said, well, when we come back after a journey, we're going to discuss the evil Alex Jones. So evil, he can't face his accuser. When they had the McCarthy hearings here, and, they were, and a lot of them were real communists they were going up against, they got to face their accuser. But in America in 2018, I don't get to face my accuser. And that's wrong. You see the Senator Beeline? I got all that one. I got all the review. <laughs> this one's what you're going? You're I'm still going. You got it. Thanks, you At least you got it. Let's see, he never does it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to give him your number? You got a card? Yeah, what's your number? Uh, 512. Oh, I'm sure. So the Alright folks, we're in the hallway, uh, directly next to the uh, hearing room. So are you, you going to get in the hearing room? No, they're not going to let me talk. All they do is lie about me, but I'm just here to let them know that I'm going to get away with it. I think we already hit them pretty hard at the press conferences and everything. Oh, really? Hey, did you see how uh, Rubio said something like, I'll take you out myself? Or oh, yeah. 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 I don't need security. He was like shaking and hated me. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't Isn't it funny, though, that he stood there at least a little bit longer and engaged you? And like, Wyden's just like, who? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't Wyden. That was bull. I thought that was right. No, that was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was not Wyden. Or maybe it was Wyden. I meant Warner. Yeah, it's not Warner. It's Wyden. That's the Schmelt test. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Wyden. <laughs> you, didn't pass, you didn't pass the Schmelt test. You didn't pass the Schmelt test. He's the one who told Sessions, this doesn't pass the Schmelt test. <laughs> oh, here, I'll back it up for everybody so they can watch it on. Okay, so just in case you're joining in. Stop violating the First We're out here in case Jack Gorsuch comes out with a nice finish to say, hey, I hope you really are supporting First Amendment. Shame on you, you want to <laughs> what? What? Just the way you're like, who's next? <laughs> you like that? Yeah. This is a, it's a classic day. What do you think? Should we uh, keep streaming here? Should I kill this? I said keep that one going. Okay. Cause it, you're, cause you're What's this? A command base? I mean, this has been this has been the stream yeah. the whole time. I did do a short one. Are you streaming? I can. I'll get it. You stream it inside? Oh yeah. Hold oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, we kept going to the door and having them kicking us out. Okay. Yeah, we're putting our... Because I thought I heard you say something in there. I don't know. We rushed the door like that. Get out. You could have, but... I don't know if they're going to come out or whatever. You still going? I'm still going. Yeah, this has been going since before. Remember, we're live, guys. Don't, yeah. don't, don't tell them the secret of early Martian agents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Russian bots. I am Russian bot. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Russian bot in the capital. 
Russian mob Senate. Beep, 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 beep. Blue Dungeons and Corners. Beep, 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 beep. How to walk into the, into the whole journal. Beep, 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 beep. Russia controls me. Beep, 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 beep. Russia says make America great again. Beep, 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 beep. Russia says grow U.S. economy 4.6. Save Second Amendment. Take care of veterans. Pretty stupid. I could go do it in front of the media. Don't don't overshadow your epic speech this morning. That was okay. Oh, that was fantastic. The press conference was top notch. Yeah. The best thing you've ever done, man. Think so? <laughs> you guys are awesome. That was definitely peak. It was. <clears throat> Clear, concise, and then to have, have the media confused at it. I mean, they literally couldn't understand what you were saying. I didn't understand. I mean, number the government rocks He called me number the box of rocks. He thinks the government's dirt. Obama's done in 2016. I'm like... Really? You really are dumber than the box. Oh, 2017. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, he said, he, yeah, 2017. And then he, uh, and then he goes, he said Saddam Hussein started the Iraq War by throwing babies out of incubators. I've never heard such. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm like, yeah, dude. The president came in on January 20th, 2017, and they fund the next year in December. Yeah. And they know there's a government shutdown. It's like these people. They literally think knowledge is like a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Anyways. I love how Rubio got really pissed. You Dude, did. why do you get so mad? We didn't put out the bathhouse story right, and the photos nice. of him like at gay parties. But, I mean, I'm not against the fact that you know, he's gay. I think it's fine. <clears throat> what? I mean, it's okay that Rubio's gay. He has to act tough. And he's probably attracted to me. That's why, you know. <laughs> Out of my face. You have that effect on. Uh, that, well, he likes, he likes airy men, you know. It's like, <laughs> I said, Rubio, come on, I'm a married man. I, you know, nothing against the fact that you're gay. But seriously, I don't know what's happening. When did the phone? It was phone parties too. Wasn't it? Phone parties. Yeah. Phone parties. Look up Marco Rubio and the gay parties. And, uh, let's just say he likes to suck killing hot dogs like Obama, <laughs> which is fine. Jones issues. Homophobic hate rant. Our uh, our viewers just keep going up and up. For people that just tuned in, you want to walk them through what uh, what we're doing here? I wonder if Infowars is even covering this now. I've called in everybody to cover it. Thalen's been getting it from the early ones. Beep, 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 beep. No, but, no, but seriously. Hold on. Receiving transmission from Putin. Putin, we are receiving transmission. Make America great again. Defend the Second Amendment. <laughs> Save America. That is the Russian order. Yes, comrade, I will. Satellite transmission ceasing. Thank you, War Putin. You don't get the full effect on camera. Huh? You don't get the full effect on camera, the whole. I am a Russian bot. But I'm not getting my full satellite transmission. Needs to be Googling it. Ah. Oh. Uh. Hold on, get a transmission. Yes, Putin. I am receiving orders, Master. Yes, Comrade Trump. Yes, make America great again. Operation going well. America growing, crushing Russia. Yes, Lord. Yes, make the country great. Yes, defeat the Democrats that wish to destroy America. Yes, how evil of your Master. Oh, we're going to put that little bit out as Alex Jones getting actual <laughs> Russian marching orders. It's in intelligence building. See, Tim, I've gone a little insane. He called Russian bomb enough to start believing. Tim, tell us what you think about this today. All right, just... Like I've said before, a lot of these hearings, they just don't go anywhere. You know, they ask these people what they're going to do, Facebook, Google, whoever, they ask them what they're going to do, they just say, we'll get back to you. And they jerk just, them off. They just let them keep going and going until the next hearing, the next hearing. Nobody's ever held accountable now. Nobody's held accountable for their actions anymore. It's okay for Facebook, Google, whoever, just to get away with whatever they want to and sell our information. To the Chinese, and then censor me. 
anybody that'll pay them, they'll sell to them. Chinese, whoever, whoever will pay a dollar, they'll sell your information, your private information to them. And so uh, I'm not okay with that. Damn you Russian bots. There's Russian bots are everywhere. Oh, she likes your Russian bot. They're not a Russian bot, comrade. Let's go back in there. They're going to be low key down. Yeah. Everybody else is doing it. They're going to give a shit. Infowars.com, Newswars.com. Tomorrow's news today. So dangerous. It's banned planetary wide by tyrants. They're trying in there right now to ban me. They've demonized me in every one of these hearings. We're told I haven't been in there much, but I'm told they've demonized me. We'll see what happens. All right, DL. Thousand followers. So why doesn't Twitter notify individuals like me uh, that we have been targeted by foreign adversaries? I, I should find out from looking at Clemson University's database and working with their researchers. It seems to me that once you determine that, you should notify the people who are the I, I agree, it's unacceptable. It's good to tell for and we, um, as I said earlier, we, we want to find ways to work more openly, um, not just with our peer companies, but with researchers and universities and also law enforcement, because they all bring a different perspective to our work and can see our work in a very different light, and we are going to do, uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that we catch everything um, and we inform people when it affects them, but we are not going to catch everything. So it is useful to have a channel partnership and work with them to make sure that we're delivering a message in a uniform manner where people actually are without requiring them to find the channel um, to get that information. So um, this is uh, where a lot of our thinking is going and a lot of our, our work is going, but we, we recognize we need to communicate more with Yeah, they, uh, they kicked me out. Uh, filming. Uh, yeah. I think I got an awesome shot of uh, Alex walking down the middle of the. Uh, um, oh, good. Uh, hey, we why don't, I, keep I would say kill your stream so they can archive it and then post it. And we got Texas guys, so you've got, you got both conversations. Oh, yeah. All right, folks. Uh, I'm going to do it for this stream now. We're going to take it down and re upload it. Uh, Alex is in there now looking at Jack Dorsey. That's part of Congress. Stay tuned.